Again, I have absolutely stunning AI news for you from the strange to the beautiful. Let's talk about that. But before we get started, I want to show you a little bit the stuff I create for my Patreon supporters. I have created three really amazing workflows that show crazy interesting concepts on how to use AI. Here we have an avatar generator that generates the same avatar with the exact same details, but different face expressions with a character consistency because actually I'm using face detailer to change the emotion of the face and on top of that I'm also showing you randomization to create an endless amount of randomized prompts so every time you click on the Q button you actually get a completely different character. Here's another experiment I want to show you. This is really cool. You can use a full size full resolution photo something you usually can't use inside of Stable Diffusion and this is rendering this glitch effect over that image. And the third one is again interesting concept. I'm using an image input. I love image to image. This is not using IPA, but it is using Allura to help a little bit with the anime style. This is a Kawaii pet creator. So up here you can put any kind of pet and then over here it creates the pet that is similar to the input style. Check out the link for my Patreon workflows right below this video. So I want to start this with a project called Vlogger. And this is coming from Google, interestingly enough. What this project does is that it uses an audio input, a voice, and then an image and it creates a complete video from that in a very nice way. Now this is not just rendering the lips, it's rendering the complete image including the body movement, the head movement, the face expression fitting to the audio on what the AI think should be the expression for that. It's really interesting to see that the project is called Vlogger and it tells a little bit about the future of how Google is envisioning AI being used. At the same time, if you think about people you see on screen, they're often made up not just like the AI influencers we already have, but for example, classic TV, you have a outfit department, you have a styling department. If you think about me, like I'm not a perfect specimen. Why wouldn't you rather look at someone who looks nicer, even looks more like you do from the ethnicity, maybe even from the language, from the intonation, things like that. So it's closer to you, but it's still the same story that is being told from a real person. That's an interesting aspect. But at the same time, it means that the cycle of iteration is becoming shorter and shorter on how it improves and how you have to reinvent yourself and what you do, which is interesting and it's a little bit concerning because it takes some time to even build a niche. So to iterate again and again might be coming harder in the future. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Next, I want to show you a project from Sakana AI. They call it evolutionary model merch. They say on Hugging Face right now there is over 500,000 different AI models. So their concept is why not have an AI that merges together different models and then tests them against each other in a evolutionary way to see which of these model merges performs the best. So basically the merging is automated and guided by the AI. So the AI is not really self-improving, but it is improving the models that are out there. But this is also telling us something about the space of AI in general, because the space has so much information that even now it is too much to dive into because our capacity is not big enough. Next, I want to show you Stable Video 3D. I have made a tutorial on how to use this locally. You can see that the results are stunning. They are better quality than we have seen before. The tech that I'm showing you in the tutorial is not creating a 3D mesh from a single image. It's creating this kind of rotation video around that object the result is amazing and from these rotational images you can certainly create a 3D mesh. AI cannot just come up with the image but then it can turn into a mesh and it might in the future even turn into a physical object with 3D printing. That is mind-blowing. 
And then we have here animate diff lightning. I showed that to you yesterday in a tutorial, how to use it in automatic 1111, how to use it inside of Comf UI. This can create lightning fast video. There's of course the downside that the quality is not as good. So this right now is more for testing different prompts and concepts. Tomorrow, by the way, I'm going to have Pertz in my live stream. We're going to talk about the things he's doing with video AI because he's a genius with his different mask animations. The things he creates are just absolutely mind blowing. Another thing that is crazy interesting to look at is a project by Meta where they are using AI and language models to understand the space around them. Now, the benefit here from the project is that instead of using the visual data, because that can be construed or bad quality, it is very difficult to get information out of just the visual data. They are using a language model and the logic inside of a language model to figure out what is inside the space. So the way this works is in a language model, it tries to figure out what is the most likely word that comes next in a sentence. But their concept is to say, well, we can do the same thing with a space because what comes next if we have a wall? for example, a window, for example, a door. If you then have this kind of language information, you can do a lot of interesting stuff with that. They talk here about guidance through a space with an overlay, for example, lightweight glasses, really interesting that Meta is talking about that. But then also what they talk about is different other concepts to understand and enrich your environment with this kind of information. You could use the AI to figure out how big does the bed have to be, or you look at an object and you can figure out how heavy is that object. You can come up with a lot of different ideas and concepts on how this can be used to help you in everyday life. A very interesting concept here is also that they say, of course, they didn't have enough video from real spaces because that is not readily available online. So what they did instead is to create 100,000 virtual environments and then let the AI walk through these virtual environments to train the AI on that kind of understanding. And the pretty stunning news about real world application is the first person in the world that has the neural link chip built into their brain. And you can see here on the screen, he's using his mind to move the mouse on the screen and play a chess game by touching nothing, just using his thoughts. This is the first person you can see here with the gray and blue shirt. He has that chip inside of his brain. This is a project from Elon Musk. And again, of course, this has crazy applications, not just for people who are in a situation where they need help, but also for everyday life. From all the news we've seen today, I got two really interesting impressions. And tell me what you think about that. The first one is that AI is creating information. It's such a big volume, but then also improving itself at such a high rate that we can't keep up with that. So we need AI to help us create and merge these models, then also AI to explain to us what is even going on and making selections for us. And then also using AI for the input with, for example, the brain chip, but also things like clip and other methods to help us get our thoughts into the AI. So we are working as a companion alongside the AI. And that's kind of interesting. The other thing is that we have a rapid rate of merging the AI creations with actual reality. But at the same time, it becomes harder to differentiate what is what. One effect that I've recently seen with myself is because AI with image generation, for example, creates such high quality outputs things that are made by hand, that are drawn by hand, that have impressed me in the past are less impressive to me now because if someone is not a highly trained master of drawing, you see the flaws a lot easier now because now you have a huge flood of images with tremendous quality that is really, really hard to create for someone by hand. Let me know how you experience these changes and what they mean to you. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.
Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.